Are we gonna see your house? You okay. think? think we'll, yeah? Do you like boats? <laughs> yeah? My husband and I, before we had kids, we actually lived on a 32-foot sailboat. The boat ended up not being the right one for us, so we moved off of it, moved into a trailer, and then we moved into a house, and that was fine, but gas was above $4 a gallon, and so we couldn't keep that up. Okay. This, this lets us live on the water. It outside. Lets us live outside. That, that's really the attraction, is to be out more. This is the somewhat derelict floating house community. And people live out there in those houses. They don't, they don't have yards, but... Um, they got the best yard in the world. Well, not yards that you can just did run out in. Did you consider that a house? Yeah. We did consider it, actually. We considered a floating house quite strongly, but the cost of the uh, marina slippage uh, in addition to the cost of the house was just too prohibitive. They're like twenty, thirty thousand dollars for a house, but then eight hundred dollars a month to pay for mortgage. Which was just too much. Yeah. What about slippage here? We pay um, less than half that. Yeah. So what do you pay? It's under four hundred, including electric. And water. Which is less than half what we were paying for an apartment that was not too much larger than the boat we moved on to. <laughs> so this is home. Blue and white. How did you find this? Um, where did we find this, honey? Craigslist? Craigslist, Craigslist huh? Yep. 14,000. 14,000, and we own it outright. Was it hard to find? Um, I looked at about 40 boats. Second, I drove all over the place. I went up to Seattle. I, uh, I've, I've been aboard, I don't know, yeah, at least 40 boats while looking in the course of a couple months. This boat behind you, in a little better shape, they're selling that one for about 30K. This is our boat. This is the cockpit. My shoes go out there because they don't fit on the rack. But my mom and dad's shoes do on the rack. Let's do this. So let's got... We just had lunch on this, this table out here. Actually, we were initially looking for a sailboat. And they're a little smaller on the inside, size for size. And eventually we kind of had a discussion and talked about how on the river you end up motoring most of the time anyway. And I ate right here today. This is our have breakfast and watch the sunrise. Best yard in the world. You move. I mean, we yeah. can. Yeah. But you don't really. Yeah. But it's a big boat. It uses a lot of gas, so you don't take it out every day. It's 43 feet long. Okay. And 14 what wide. Is, is it 13? It's, it's about the same size as a single wide mobile home. They're get well, a little, the sm little smaller because the uh, because the nose is pointed. Come on down. Come on down. It's quite a bit larger than you would think, but we've got our entertainment center sort of behind you. All the comforts of home. And there's my pink chair. Oh, everybody's got their own spot. And what's that fireplace? It's actually an electric one. We love wood burning stoves, but this is all we can really safely do at the moment. I got toys in here and you toys in my closet over there. We have somewhat limited space. You kind of move stuff around when you need to. What's that? It's my tea stuff. Your what? My tea party stuff. So we were very concerned about Rosemary and her being feeling secure and feeling like this is home. So and all not of, so like we didn't she's we didn't throw her. any of her toys. Some of them are in storage right now while I'm remodeling her bedroom. And then once her bedroom's remodeled, then we'll bring all of the rest of her toys on the boat. This is our kitchen. I've got double stainless steel sink, which is kind of surprising. I've of course, a couple dishes I need to do. <laughs> Three burner stove. It really is quite a bit larger than I was expecting. And when we first were looking, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to have to adjust to a little two burner stove, or the burners are only going to be a big. <laughs> nope. Perfectly normal. Is it a gas? One? Yes. Yeah, propane. With an oven. I can probably stick a chicken in there. Don't think I can fit a turkey. Our first boat. When we lived on our sailboat, we had a little electric oven. And Thanksgiving was one of our first, was our first holiday on the boat. And so we made a 
uh, chicken breast for Thanksgiving. I mean, all the all turkey stuff thing, turkey breast. Yeah, because mine was just a little tabletop thing, but it worked. It worked real well. And I brought my plants along, and <laughs> this fridge is way bigger than I was expecting, because it, it's. I mean, you can fit full-size stuff in there. I was honestly expecting something that was only this big, but I've got a freezer, too. <gasps> yeah, is this is a full-size fridge. A full-size apartment fridge. There's a lot of ice we got. Typical fridges that you would find in a regular home are about so much taller and about so much wider. But with your typical family nowadays, who needs that much space? <laughs> That's the dining table. It actually does convert to a bed. The dining table goes down and both the cushions pull across and you just put blankets or a sleeping bag on top of it. So when people come over, they have a place to sleep, a place to stay? Oh. Antique wiener dog. He's still learning his spot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this has really been a long process. We started with, hey, we don't want to live in an apartment anymore. We hate living here. And then Jane said, I want a house. And I said, I'll... Okay, I wanted a boat. She didn't want a boat. Okay, we'll go get it. Yeah, house. at the time. And um, so we went out. We probably looked at twenty or twenty-five houses that you know they needed some work. They were kind of low into the market. They only had so much money, and um, we just weren't finding the thing we wanted. We did consider building one. We were looking at tough sheds and at uh, the possibility of making the inside of one of those. One we looked at some land, but the cost of bringing in utilities to the land that we were looking at and the amount of money that we had readily accessible was less than would be needed to actually finish out a tiny home. Can what do you think? see what toys are in my closet all Sure, no, we haven't seen her. Let's go down to your closet. You've been waiting so long. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, she's five. <laughs> yeah. And since we have a five-year-old who is going to school in September, we needed a solid place to live. See? It's my closet and it has all of, some of my stuff in I got Legos right here. Mm -hmm. And there's my bath toys. Oh. And there's my cover and both clothes. And my Play-Doh. And my books. There. It fits every scrap of clothing wow. that she has. So all the clothes in there came out of a closet that's twice as big as the passage you're standing in. There's my bed with my dog and pig right there. See? So this is this is temporary. She actually has her own room. Up uh, the in the forward pick. cabin that I'm in the process of remodeling. Okay. And in about a month it'll be done. In the meantime, these we've got the two bunks back here, so and that's a queen size bed. Regular beauty rest dad. mattress. Just so, same thing you'd have at home in a house. Yeah, shower? Oh, yeah, shower and full on bathroom. It's pretty much just like every other bathroom, you have the necessary facilities. This is actually an electric toilet. It's porcelain. You do your business and then you push this button here, but... And there it goes. We have an onboard sewage system, so the waste goes to a tank, and then you pump once out. the tank gets you know, full enough, then you go to a pump house station, you pump it out. You have okay. a regular stand-up shower. Um, it, it's a snug fit, but... I'm a fairly round person, and I can actually fit in there, and I can wash everything, so I don't have any trouble there. Let's see the shower heads on. Oh, I see it's behind here. It, it, it's oh, actually, it's all... it, it, it hooks. There's a hook to keep ah, it open, so, it, oh, so it doesn't bang oh, around. So it doesn't bang around. Smart. No, wait. Keep in mind, it's a boat. It moves. You know, you're going to drive the places. You don't want things banging around and jumping around, so everything has a spot. Everything has a hook. Everything has something to keep it secure. Mm, yeah. A little different than living on land. Yeah. A little bit, but a lot... A lot efficient. <laughs> a lot efficient. Yep, sink, plenty of storage. We this. have a lot of space here. So these are, you This know, is storage. You got four of these. Yeah. And then we have another, basically from here back to here is all storage down there. And then right, blanket down right behind now. you, okay. we've got four more drawers, five drawers, mm -hmm. and a closet. There's Actually, we have more room than we did in our apartment. Yeah. You really think about it. Actually, have more space. This yeah. is his and my hanging up stuff. Yeah. This dress clothes for work, and these are some stuff that I wear to church. Everything else of mine is in this closet right back here, which I could actually put quite a bit more in. We had a walk in closet in our bedroom that was from about the size of if you take this bunk and come out from where I'm standing, square. 
about that big. And we looked in that and thought, my God, how are we going to fit all of this in the boat? And everything was hanging. And we brought it to the boat, and I said, well, you know, you could fold it. Underwear and so forth. And sheets. Goodwill got a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Probably eight or ten bag, trash bags, big trash bags full of stuff. This is the only winter coats that we actually kept on the boat. A couple of her dresses that would wrinkle. And then just a little storage dealy what's it that I that I have there. Pretty much a utility uh, closet. I'm not very attached to stuff. <laughs> you simply look at it and think, okay, have I used this in the last six months? If not, goodbye. Do I have some sort of sentimental attachment to this? If so, why is it very important? If not, pitch it. I am gonna it's open really this window. Boat, I think. Like used from everywhere, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's lovely, absolutely lovely because there's so much light. Yeah. Our friend John it. It's nice, it's you know, even seeing the boats that people go by, it's like you feel like I feel like I'm on vacation. That's what it feels like every day. Mm -hmm. Really? That's normal. I've here. taken the last couple of days off from moving, right and I feel here. like I don't want to go back. I just want to stay here. Then I think, well, there's the whole money thing you got. Yeah, you, you kind gotta of got to make money to eat. But <laughs> but actually, your cost can't be that high if you paid it's off. Not. We've it's cut, not. We've cut uh, roughly six hundred dollars a month out of our budget. Just by moving here, that's it. In the river. Step down. This just makes sense. Makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Financial, emotional. Alright, we're gonna get out here where the current can let us throw. This is gonna sound completely hippie, but it's a very healing place to live. It really is. Even though we're right in the middle of Portland, there's a lot of relaxation going on right here because you have green things immediately accessible that a lot of people in Portland just don't have. You have water that's constantly flowing so you it, it's it never feels like you're drowning in other people's negativity which is exactly what our apartment was like. Mm. And you don't have to smell other people's cigarette smoke and, and I just hear them arguing with each other. There's more maintenance than there is on land, but as long as you sort of keep up on it, it's fine. An old wooden boat, there's a lot of varnishing, and if you get any rot, you have to replace planks and things like that. The engines, just like your car engine, you got to change the oil and keep it upkeep, but it's not that bad. It's really just, you know, like an apartment. Very much so. Yeah. Just slightly smaller. And it floats. This is a lot bigger than the love seat we had before. It was kind of a challenge to get it in here, but... And, and, it, and it's funny, you think living close, and you do live close, you'd argue more and all that. At least for us, you don't. One, one thing that we noticed, we were much closer as a family when we had a smaller space. When, when, there, when we had less stuff, we had more us. Um, you, you end up being more polite. You, you're, you're nicer to one another. And... and you help each other more. And so with her growing up in that kind of environment... I think you're just more aware of the family unit. The only real concern is, you know, if somebody got an attitude, but, you know, she's a good kid, and, and we're raising her up to not have bad attitudes. So. Yeah. But the phone forward cabin is really designed for two people. And that's going to be her room. So this, was, this boat belonged to an older gentleman that was retired. Um, he used to work at Boeing, and uh, he was dying, actually. I'm not sure of what. And so it had been a little neglected. This was the worst part. The ceiling was covered in this dirty mesh stuff, so I pulled all that down, and we're going to recover the ceiling with beaded board. It'll be white. Um, and then the walls will be painted, and we'll have chalkboards and whiteboards and things for the rosemary to play with. These old cushions have mildew, so we're going to get rid of those. That forward area up there is where the anchor chain and the and associated equipment goes, so that's not really a part of her room. But this whole area will be her bedroom. And then 
to your left, she'll have a bathroom as well through this door here, which right now I'm using it for storage, but it's another bathroom. It's, it's really not much different than a house, except it's got a bilge. There's hatches in the floor that you have to work around, that sort of thing. You know, the whole boat's made of wood. It's, it's just woodwork. It's not anything special. Wow. She'll have her own skylight. Yeah, she's got a hatch up there. And... So she'll be in school. So it's yeah, she's, she's going into kindergarten. Yeah, she has, she has friends. There's not as many younger kids in this community, but other communities, yes. The place where we want to move the boat to in a month or two, it, there, it's very much focused around liveaboards. More family oriented. Very fam family oriented. The, so you can decide. If you yeah. like your neighbors, you can move. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's some limitations. Some marinas only have so many liveaboard spots available. And is that because there's like... I think it's tax related. Historically, the state has a somewhat dim view of people who live on boats because uh, historically it's a sort of a transient thing. There's a, a liveaboard fee some marinas charge that covers, like, they have to pay certain additional taxes based on how many liveaboards they have. And then yes. practically, you don't want people yeah. next to you either. I mean, we have, they live aboard their boat, and they're all the way down there, so we have privacy. I can sit and watch a movie or play a game or something and not really worry too much about bothering the neighbors. They told me they've been on their boat for, what is it? 20 years. 20 years? They're retiring and they're going to sell the boat and move on land. They're gonna, and, and they're going to give it a try. They haven't lived on land for 20 years. I told them, I said, I give them a year, then they're going to be buying another boat. Yeah. Do you think this is sustainable forever if you want it to be? Uh, absolutely. I think you it's know, as sustainable as long as you want it to be. As long as it's fun. Our but parents think we're crazy. Yes. Really? Oh yeah, they think we're nuts. Well, his parents think we're nuts. My my parents are reserving judgment. It's not, you know, my, my family is from basically middle America and they're very, you live in a house, you live in an apartment, you, you do what you're sort it's of expected to, to do, you know. See, there's the flock of ducks. See, that's right there. See, that's Originally, I had very mixed feelings about living on a boat with a small child and got to the point where I finally decided, okay, I'm either going to live the way I want to live or I'm going to forever be hiding with my kid. And that's not how I want her to see me. That's not how I want to be. So I bit the bullet, as it were. And I don't regret it. I'm much happier out here.